I gotta be honest, ever since the original M1 came out, my first M1 machine was the M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM, pretty much base model, everything except for that 16 gigs of RAM. And ever since then, every single M chip upgrade or improvement that's come out up until today has honestly been really boring to me. And that includes even the M1 MacBook Pros. And I have a 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip in it. And it's a great laptop. It's probably one of the best laptops that Apple has ever made. But from a pure performance standpoint, I've been really bored with these computers in the best way possible. The thing is M1 was already so damn good that every upgrade since then has been, okay, yeah, cool. It's like 15, 20% faster at doing this, X, that, whatever. They're still great. Push aside the new M2 MacBook Pro updates, push aside all of that crap because there's only one computer in my opinion that really pushed through all that performance boredom and that is the M2 Mac Mini. The reason for that is it's cheap. So now it's exciting that you can get all of this performance and power from these new chips in something that only costs 600 bucks. For 99% of the population, you're still fine with an M1 MacBook Air, an M1 MacBook Pro, an M1 Mac Mini, all of those machines that we've had for the last couple of years, you know, go pick one of those things up, refurbish, they're fantastic. If you're just doing word processing, Facebook, you're going on social media, browsing the internet, email, doing some light video editing, doing some photo editing even, those computers will fly and I can almost guarantee you they will fly for years to come as well. Another thing that's always sort of like clouded the conversation around these computers is that most people that make these videos for everybody come from a production standpoint or a creative standpoint. So they edit video, they edit photos, they're doing media production. And I think the vast majority of users out there do some of that for sure, especially now that we're in this world of social media and TikTok and all that stuff, like more people are doing more media related tasks with these machines. But general purpose stuff, you know, like the regular things that maybe your parents do or your friends do or stuff that just people don't always create, these machines are fucking amazing. So at $600, I was curious, could this be a machine that you could use or that I could use? Someone who's a little bit more advanced with their computer usage. We're not talking about just the general population that's just doing word processing and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, those folks are fine. You can grab this machine because it's the newest one, of course. You can have it for years and you'll be fine. Or you can use one of the older refurbs. You can get an M1 MacBook Pro and you'll probably be fine. Mac Studio, all those computers are fucking awesome. But at $600, my curiosity has been peaked because if you're a first time creator, you need an extra machine for something or you're looking to upgrade an old Intel machine to something very, very affordable because you don't wanna break the bank just to be able to edit some 4K video and stuff, can this Mac mini perform the tasks that we do day to day as creatives and professionals in this industry. And guess what? Of course it can, because M1 could already do that. I loaded this thing up with some 4K video from my a7 IV. I layered it four times and this thing was still smooth sailing. For $600, truly, you are getting a machine that you can edit 4K video with, you can edit your raw photos with it, you can do all the basic mid-level and even professional level video and photo work that you'd want to do with a computer in a $600 desktop machine. It reminds me a lot of where we're at with cameras, right? Where it's like every camera is so damn good now. The thing with Apple computers is every Apple computer is so damn good now. There's a lot of people that I even say, just go grab a refurb MacBook Air if you just need to edit some 4K stuff real quick, you're fine. Unless you're doing full-fledged, you know, feature filmmaking and narrative documentary work and like you're layering six layers of 8K and you gotta do all this color correction. Yeah, sure, go up to like a Mac Studio or get a MacBook Pro. But for us, if you make YouTube videos, if you do stuff on TikTok, if you're just doing social media things for clients or for yourself, this is a 600 hour machine that can do all of that and you will not break a sweat while doing it. Now, one thing when it comes to the base model is that it only comes with eight gigs of RAM. And from all my experience with M1, you definitely wanna to try to get at least 16 gigs of RAM. One of the big reasons why I went to the Mac Studio is because I wanted to get up to at least 64 gigs of RAM. This is a machine that I wanna hang on to for a long time. And I do find that the biggest bottleneck with these base models is the RAM. So if you have that little bit extra money to grab the 16 gigs of RAM, I think you'll be in a much better position to have a long-term device. Whereas I do find with the eight gig, it's a little bit easier to bottleneck that machine. So I would just suggest if you can, you have a little bit extra cash, go up to at least 16 gigs of RAM. So M1 was already a paradigm shift in terms of what we had for performance. Now we've just hit a new level of what that performance costs. And that opens the doors for a lot more creators to have access to a machine with this level of power. And that to me is incredibly exciting and fun. And it's not boring 
anymore, which is a lot of computers have been because they're so damn expensive, whether it's a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio, they're not cheap computers. This thing is $599. It is so nice to be able to have a machine out in the world now that I can recommend to students and folks that are just getting into this as a hobby or if they just need another machine that they don't have to break the bank with. I'm sure a lot of people already have computer monitors sticking around and mice and keyboards, all the stuff they've had from their old machines can now be translated into this little desktop computer. And I think that's just so much fun. It's so exciting that we have this type of performance at this price point. So I don't wanna get into benchmarks. I don't wanna compare it to my Mac Studio or my MacBook Pro. Those serve a purpose for me. I need the IO, I want some more USB ports, I want all that stuff that comes, I want the SD card reader. That is stuff that I need for professional work. But if I didn't have the money for that, if I was you know, just starting out, I'm a freelancer, I'm just getting into this, this is the machine that I would buy. I would pay 600 bucks for this and spend all the money on other things that I should invest in my business, better lights, better lenses, getting help, all this kind of stuff that you would need. And even at this base level with only eight gigs of RAM, there's still no reason why you can't edit your video, you can't edit your photos comfortably. Sure, it might not be as fast as like a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio, but it is still damn fast. It's faster than any Intel machine you've probably ever used. And that to me is what is so exciting about this M2 Mac Mini. And hands down, it's just the best computer under $1,000. So if that's your budget, here it is. This is the computer for you. This is the one you should absolutely grab. I'm not saying if you have an M1 machine that you should upgrade to this. There's absolutely no reason for that. I would still use my M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM. I don't really notice that big of a difference between them. So for me, I would just say, look, I already have that machine, that's the one I'm gonna use. I already have my Mac Studio, that's the one I'm gonna use. I'm not upgrading to M2 from any of my other machines. I was just curious, could this machine be as great as I thought it would be in my head? for 600 bucks, and yeah, of course it is. It could have still had an M1 in it for 600 bucks. So I'm just excited. I think it's a great time to have an Apple computer and we have never seen this type of power to performance available to the masses before. And that is just an exciting proposition for creatives. Just like cameras, you're not held back by the tools and the equipment or even the money anymore. It's all on you. So if it's in your brain and you wanna get it out there, we have everything we need to make that happen. If you have any questions about the M2 Mac Mini, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, my name is Patrick Tomasso, and you will see or hear me because I feel like making a video. Cheers.